Welcome to one of the greatest cities on the planet. Hello and welcome to Discover Wisconsin. This is an anthem For those who look for more And never say they've seen it all Windows down Let's take a The girl that's great Tonight Madison is just so fun. Madison is welcoming, surprising. I love Madison, never want to leave. There's no other place to be besides Madison. Go, Go Lucky! Quirky, vibrant, geek chic. Madison is so many things. Oh, it's a foodie's dream and a bicyclist paradise. I mean, there's a million reasons why the Madison area is regarded as one of the best places to work, play, and live in. Today on Discover Wisconsin, 10 reasons to love the Madison area. Madison is located in South Central Wisconsin in Dane County. We'll be discovering Wisconsin's capital city plus a few gems just outside the city limits. First up on our list of reasons to love the Madison area, the Isthmus. The Isthmus and the lakes, I mean, that's what makes Madison, Madison. You know, if you, if you fly out of Madison, you look down, you can see the city surrounded with a lake on one side and a lake on the other, and then the Isthmus is where the city is at. So it's very unique in that you've got lakes on both sides and just this vibrant, great city right in the middle where there's so much to do. Head to the Isthmus downtown and you've got this happening, you know, super, like tons of commotion going on, like there's things to see around every corner, really exciting. It's really neat to witness within footsteps in this city. You can have peace and quiet, you can have super crazy commotion, wildness of a downtown city, all in this compacted little isthmus. It's pretty incredible. Okay, so clearly we're big fans of the isthmus. And chances are you've already guessed the number two reason to love the Madison area. Yep, the lakes. Madison is famous for the five lakes that are connected by the Yahara River chain. The lakes are very, very popular. It's a huge part of Madison life. Uh, getting out on Mendota, Monona, Wingra, Wabisa, or Kiganza is always a wonderful time. There are so many ways to get outside. Uh, all around this area uh, within a five minute drive of even Madison, but even inside of Madison. You can pop right down here uh, at Brittingham Boats here in Brittingham Park. We are within five minutes of the capital. Brittingham Boats is Madison's downtown premier access point for the water. Uh, we have paddle boards, kayaks, canoes, rowboats, anything you can paddle and is human propelled. Uh, we have it and get you out in the water. And if you just show up any day, we'll judge the weather for you and get you in the right boat just so you can spend some time with family and friends out in the water. So we might want to enjoy the outdoor urban areas because it's beautiful. Within a five minute paddle of here, you can see the entire city skyline, but also feel like you're up north. I think what a lot of people don't realize is that Madison is actually extremely outdoorsy. You know, you think of a city like Madison and you might automatically want to think of, you know, this sort of concrete jungle. It is not that. There's a lot of energy here in Madison, but there's also a lot of peace and quiet to be found. You just got to know where to go and what to look for. Madison's outstanding. Beautiful city, great people, great energy. Madison may be a stunner in the summer, but these lakes are pretty busy in the winter too. Madison in the wintertime is amazing just because of the, the ability to get on the lake and have fun. Snow kiting is we're on skis or snowboard, and then we have a harness, barn lines that go up to a kite, and the kite is pulling us across the lakes in the wind. Explore more of Madison at discoverwisconsin.com. Coming up, Jake and I are heading outside the city to discover a Norwegian museum, unreal architecture, and even an underground cave. 
We'll be right back. Welcome back to Discover Wisconsin. We're exploring 10 reasons to love the Madison area. Number three on our list of reasons to love the Madison area, well, here's a hint. He's a famous architect who left his handprints all over this area. And the building we're standing on right now is one of his many masterpieces. Frank Lloyd Wright is one of the most famous architects in the entire world, and you can see his work all over the greater Madison area. The Monona Terrace is his signature Madison piece and an international icon. When people all over the world see that building, they think of Madison. South Central Wisconsin is basically one big Frank Lloyd Wright museum, and you can see so much of it within the 30 to 40 minutes of the city. Time for a little road trip just outside the city limits to discover number four on our list, state parks and national landmarks. Now you might not realize this, but there are actually about a dozen state parks in the Madison area. A lot of Madisonians don't even know that, actually. We're gonna go to one called Blue Mound State Park. It's in Blue Mounds, as you probably guessed. So about 30 miles west of Madison. What's most memorable about Blue Mound State Park is the whole park is situated atop the highest point in southern Wisconsin. So the views, unparalleled. We're going there in fall, so the fall foliage is gonna be stunning. I love that it's also very accessible. You don't have to hike a million miles to get there. You drive actually right up to the mound, to the top of the mound, park your car, get out and climb up the towers if you'd like, or you can just check out some of the bench areas. You can, you can set up a picnic if you want to. You see a lot of couples there and enjoying a glass of wine together on their blankets. You see people hiking with their dogs. Speaking of dogs, I actually kind of kidnapped or dog napped, if you will, my camera guy's dog, Luna, and we're gonna spend the day together. We're gonna see how I do with the dog and how Luna does with me, more importantly. So we explored what's on top of the mound in Blue Mounds. Now we're going to check out what's underneath them. Cave of the Mounds is a national landmark located west of Madison. And if you've been there before, you've probably never seen it the way we're about to see it. Cave of the Mounds is a natural limestone cave that began forming about 2 million years ago but it was only discovered about 75 years ago. We've been inviting families and schools and all sorts of visitors to travel underground on our paved lighted walkways and experience the underground world. I've always associated Cave of the Mounds as you know, kind of that quintessential field trip destination. The cave is a, a classic field trip destination, but now it's also a great spot for people to come, young couples, young adults to come, because we started a whole series of after hours events where we get to enjoy an adult beverage, a beer or wine or cocktail inside the cave, along with music, either in our visitor center or up in our 1883 barn. I love that you can experience some you know, great art and culture right in downtown Madison, but just a short you know, 20, 30 minute drive outside of the city, you can be in a cave. That's crazy. I've lived in Madison for about 25 years now, went to school, and it's such a great place, such a great town, but I, I have realized that a lot of people kind of stay downtown, go to the farmer's market, go to the museums and the culture there, but there's so many things to do once you get just outside of town a little bit, and the nature is so beautiful, you just can't beat it. This is an opportunity to unplug. Your phone isn't gonna work underground. I love it. You know, anytime you can mix beer with learning, it's good in my book. That's it, it got me through college, right? <laughs> right, that's the formula, for sure. While Mariah's west of the city, I made my way south to Stoughton. Number five on our list of reasons to love the Madison area, the many museums. The Madison area has a wonderful museum scene and we're so glad to be part of it. We are in Leaves Risa. It means life's journey in Norwegian. We're also known as the Norwegian American Heritage Center. The Norwegian Heritage Center really is, is a hidden gem, and it's a great example of a museum that is on the outskirts of Madison. Stoughton is a very special place because of the number of Norwegian immigrants that came to the Stoughton area. The purpose of our center is to tell the story of Norwegian immigration. By 1900, uh, most people don't know that one-fourth of all the people living in Wisconsin were Norwegian immigrants. Learn more about all of the places we've featured in today's episode by visiting discoverwisconsin.com. Coming up... If you are a foodie at heart, you are going to love the Madison area. Discover Wisconsin is back with 10 reasons to love the Madison area. All right, if you are a foodie at heart, you are going to love the Madison area. Come on. 
So number six on our list of reasons to love the Madison area, the food scene. The first stop I have for you is one of my all-time favorites. Its name is as unique as the menu itself. A Pig in a Fur Coat is located on Williamson Street, or Willie Street, as the locals say. The food there is kind of Mediterranean comfort food, so the menu really does reflect the best flavors of Italy, Spain, and France. It's so good. All right, next up on our itinerary is a spot called Everly. It's located at the intersection of Monroe and Knickerbocker. This spot is a total brunch powerhouse. It kind of has that cool California vibe. When you get your plates, you're gonna see they're full of color, really vibrant meals here. Right next door to Everly is a place called Miko Poke. Now this is a counter style Hawaiian shop, so you're going to get there what they call poke. It's a celebrated dish in Hawaii. It's basically raw fish served on top of rice or baby greens. You can also throw in whatever kind of vegetables you want. When you're done with your poke, make sure you try some Hawaiian shaved ice. It is delish. This is Madison. You just cannot go wrong here. There are amazing restaurants around every corner. Another personal favorite of mine, Quibi's Grove, is actually located just outside of Madison in the town of Fitchburg. I think Quibi's Grove is interesting because you can kind of pick whatever kind of environment you want. You can dine outside or you can dine inside the stable and stone house, both of which were built in 1885. The ambiance is fantastic, and so is the food. It's really, really good. You kind of feel like you're dining on this historic farm right in the middle of the city. It is so cool. For those looking to up their culinary game, may I suggest taking a cooking class with a James Beard award-winning chef. Chef Tori Miller puts his talents on full display while hosting fun, intimate classes at his Spanish-influenced restaurant, Estreon. Madison has so many great options, a lot of great restaurants and bars, great places to eat, but if you want to try something unique, check out the food carts. We're really lucky today we're going to sample food from four different food carts, including our first stop here, Melted. Um, and then we're going, going to go to a cart called Jakarta Cafe, which serves food from Indonesia. And then we'll take a little mini tour through our Capitol building and before we head to El Grito, which is new to the square this year. And then we'll finish up with some pie from the pickle jar. I feel full. <laughs> I feel full and I feel satisfied, honestly. It was, uh, it was just great being able to experience uh, a lot of the different options down here at these food cars. Okay, so we've established the food in the Madison area. It's to die for, without a doubt. But if you need a beverage to go along with your meal, this area definitely delivers. To start, we have Cambridge Winery, just east of Madison in the town of Cambridge. The wines are really, really good. If wine isn't your thing, check out J. Henry and Sons. This location is right at the family farm, so it's really beautiful, very rustic in the town of Dane, so not too far from Madison. We tried a lot of handcrafted bourbon there, which was so, so good. And then there's also Wollersheim Distillery. So surely you've heard of Wollersheim Winery. What you may not know is they have a distillery there, and they're really known for their brandies as well as their gin. I believe I also tried a little absinthe. It was actually really good. I really liked it. And we had Courtney to help us out, who did an awesome job walking us through each of the products. It was a really fun day. If eating is how we pregame in Madison, well, I think you'll be equally impressed by the city's music and entertainment scene. And that is number seven on our list. One of the things that Madison is known for is busking. It's actually legal here in Madison, and that's not the case in a lot of other cities across the country. So that means that people can come in and play on the street for money. You see cellists and violinists and acoustic artists all sort of sharing their art and sharing their talent. They really make the area and the ambiance sort of come alive. You are home. On the other side of the square, you'll find this iconic summer music series. Live on King Street brings national groups to Madison for a concert right in the streets. And this spot may just be the hub of Madison's cultural arts district. The Overture Center plays host to national and international touring artists and Broadway performers every year. 
Learn more about all of the places we featured in today's episode by visiting discoverwisconsin.com. Coming up, Jake gears up, and I head to campus. Don't go anywhere. Discover Wisconsin is back with 10 reasons to love the Madison area. You can't talk about Madison without talking about biking. That's number eight on our list. Everywhere you look, there are city buses adorned with bike racks. There's even a bike elevator here. Bicycling is the way of life in Madison. If you're a bike enthusiast, there are so many options in the Madison area, and not just in town. I'm not talking just around State Street, and around the Capitol and all that. You get off the beaten path and you will find so many different types of trails. In fact, there are about 200 miles of bike trails in the Madison area. The city also embraces an urban bike share program called Madison B-Cycle. This is considered by many to be the bike capital of the Midwest, so I'm embracing it. I decided to give fat tire biking a go at Quarry Ridge in Fitchburg. I guess I didn't know really what to expect, but man, when you get into those uh, into those trails and you're you're flying around corners as these guys are right here, uh, it it gets a uh, gets a little scary at times. You really got to be on top of what you're doing, and you certainly don't want to take your eye off the trail. Question: Where can one spot Abe Lincoln, tour the legendary Bascom Hall, and jump around in a sea of red? All right, so we all know UW, Madison, is a big part of the scene here in this city. But what you might not realize is there are actually a lot of really cool little hidden gems that you can take advantage of, whether you are a student or not. So it's not just about seeing a football game at Camp Randall, although that's very important. There are some other free little spots that you can check out right on campus. One of those places is called Allen Centennial Garden. You have this really peaceful, beautiful environment right in the middle of the city. Another hidden gem is Babcock Hall ice cream. So a lot of people have heard of the ice cream, but I find that not too many people actually visit Babcock Hall. I mean, there's nothing better than uh, Babcock ice cream. So, Why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Come on, the nostalgia of Wisconsin and just supporting your university, plus the ice cream is great the heartbeat, the hub, the epicenter of Madison, of course, is the Capitol building. The Capitol building itself is the second tallest Capitol building in the entire nation, only second to the national Capitol. When you come around John Nolan Drive and you see the skyline lit up, the first thing you go to is, is that Capitol. Wisconsin has such a fascinating political history and it all really kind of comes from this building here. I think regardless of whatever your political beliefs are, you know, everyone is welcome at the Capitol building. You see everyone kind of coming in from all ideologies and all beliefs, taking pictures and taking a guided tour and just marveling at the views of both the interior but also the views of downtown Madison from the observation deck. There's nowhere quite like Madison anywhere else in the world. It's an amazing place to live, work, and play in. Beautiful lakes, a happening isthmus. Parks, museums, and a lot of biking. And a whole lot of Bucky Pride. Oh yeah. <laughs> For a few more reasons to love the Madison area, visit discoverwisconsin.com. I'm Jake Zimmerman. I'm Mariah Haberman. That's a wrap.